I mean, a very topical issue last week, not because it was the first time. Of over 20 years, many had clamored for it. And as we told you earlier, reminded you uh, a while ago, the former president, uh, uh, Mohamed Buhari, also stamped his authority, issued an executive order in 2020. But now that the Supreme Court had issued out a verdict last week, we want to see or examine uh, the political connotation that it would have among political parties and the governors across the board as they had related with local governments within that domain before now and what the new verdict would mean for them moving forward. Also, how it will affect the local government elections uh, across the states. Ah, we have with us this morning Ambassador Jake Apele. He is the founder of TAF Africa. Indeed, our pleasure to have you with us on the program. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, beautiful show. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, first off, what was your, what, how did you receive the, the, the verdict? We all had looked forward to that Supreme Court verdict. Did it go the way you thought it would? And if yes, uh, in what ways do you think this could change how politics is played uh, across states, especially between state governors and their local government chairmen? Shemu, I think it's a cheering news. Um, I think this will help uh, local democratic um, growth. Uh, knowing fully well that uh, the local government is closest to the rural dwellers. Um, I have a, a bit of a mixed feeling uh, in the sense that there needs to be very clear information around the accounting sort of... Um, those that these uh, local government will be accountable to. I know that uh, what is making rounds is that the state assembly uh, will hold them accountable uh, and all that. So now we need to deal with the issue of um, the loyalty between this, the speaker, who is the uh, chief uh, administrative uh, officer of the state assembly and the governor who is the chief executive of the state um where lies their loyalty and so there's going to be a sort of a, a political mix grill and drill uh between the local government chairman the governor and the speaker um in terms of what it pertains to democracy and growth. It's a welcome development. Uh, I pray that um, both the governors and the speaker will allow the chairman do the needful and that the people around the chairman, the community, the constituency, um, or the local government authority, the traditional rulers within that local government will hold these um, chairman of the local government accountable uh they should be able to go to him and say look well we understand that you receive so so and so uh what are you doing to develop our community you know i think it will probably bring an end to this share money syndrome where the local government chairman gets the money and all he does is pay a little bit of a salary and then share the rest with his political godfather and pocket the rest of it you know so this will put more money in their hands more control over their finances but it can also spell more wahala for uh for them because divided loyalty am i going to be loyal to the governor or i'm going to be loyal to the speaker who will uh have oversight function on uh, the administration of the finance and so it's a good thing uh, but let not this good thing become a bad thing. So there's a need for, uh, one, the um, accounting department, which is the um, accountant general of the state, uh, to put his eyes on what happens to the money. There's a need for uh, the House of Assembly uh, to put their eyes uh, on it. There's a much more demand on the civil society 
around our local government. I mean, what is happening at the national level will begin to happen in the local government, where we will monitor the budget um, allocation, implementation, and and just oppose it uh, with results. You know, so it, it's a good development, uh, but I pray that it doesn't uh, turn a sour taste uh, in the mouth of the uh, the citizenry, uh, because they they receive the brunt of this high-level political corruption and mismanagement of funds. Um, I am very passionate about local government. As we speak, I'm in Asaba. I monitored the local government uh, elections in, in uh, Delta. So I'm very passionate about local government and the development thereof. Because if we get it right at the local government, we will get it right at the national government. Uh, you know, uh, both subnational, uh, which is part of local government, and the national, you know, uh, and so all hands must be on deck to make sure that yeah, yeah. democracy works at the local yeah. government as much um, as we want it to work at the national government. Uh, James, uh, I mean, Jake, I, I am not so um, optimistic um, at this ruling, and primarily because of um, existing structures uh, which we've not been able to dismantle. You talked about uh, you asked a question which I think should even never have been asked in the same in the in the same uh, um, um, the, I mean, in the same environment. You shouldn't be we shouldn't be asking where the loyalty of um, House of Assembly members should be. Naturally, it should be with the people and not with uh, the, the governors. So, so you see, we have some existing structures which I think would um, not allow the effective uh, uh, maximization of this uh, position of the Supreme Court, this affirmation by the Supreme Court. Even the, election, the electioneering process also is one of the ways that we also know that um, uh, these politicians can manipulate the system. They have a way. They always find a way to manipulate the system to favor them. Let's look at the elections of um, these local local governments going forward. How do we, how can we how can we have proper elections where the people's choice of um, local government chairman would would come to fruition? Big concerns here. Well. Um I, I, I monitored both elections that took place on Saturday, um, that of Delta. Uh, Delta, we deployed more resources. Uh, uh, in Adamawa, we relied on our partners, uh, network partners. In Delta, we deployed the 75 observers across the length and breadth of uh, the 25 local government, I, I, I believe. Um, and uh, we made sure that we have three uh, roving um, observers and we deployed technology so we're able to receive real-time information uh, with videos and and all the stuff so we've issued three different um, statements uh, the pre-election statement the during election statement and the post-election statement um, how uh, yeah you're right uh, just like we're calling for the electoral reforms at the national level we need to also call for electoral reforms at the local level at the local government levels uh, i was privileged to be in the midst of uh, 20 of the 36 chairman of CIEC, uh here in delta and we had a side meeting and I agreed to work on one holistic electro local government election guideline that the states can dom domesticate that's how it starts uh in in doing that uh when we do it independently that means we didn't rely on the state resources just like i am here in delta you know i we paid our bills um so that we can have a very objective uh observation and report objectively too so my brother you're right the the weak institution around local government election, uh, the weak institution around election administration, the weak institution amongst the political parties. I mean, for instance, here in Delta, uh, 10 political parties uh, um, was part of this election, although some of them started pulling out 
in the midst of the election or prior to the election, you know. But uh, it was relatively um, maybe forty percent uh, peaceful, sixty um, um, percent uh, in terms of administration, you know, and then other challenges that came across. But we discovered the same thing that happens all the time: a situation where the sitting political party, the incumbent political party in the state, uh, swept the polls, you know. And I went around myself and I, 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 I deduced one factor. And that factor is the fact that, you know, there are weak opposition and very weak candidates. And you can't win election when you are a weak opposition or you present a very weak candidate you know um local government election is a community election is is uh, is the is the community that makes up that local government that determines most times who will cheer and in this case if you have the right person that is popular among the community if you have the right person that uh, is endorsed by the people even when someone try to impose someone on them they will resist it but when you have a very weak candidate that is unpopular that doesn't have political ideology that doesn't have a sound vision to present any other person can take over all right that opportunity. okay yes. jake so for the benefits of this discussion we're wrapping up in just maybe two minutes or so uh some people have the view that uh, they're calling actually for the scrapping of state electoral commissions they want INEC to handle local government elections what do you say Jim, until INEC is unbundled and uh removed and 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 they, they pull out some of the um many big humongous um responsibility that is overwhelming them that is over overweighing them uh let's not even talk about add, adding local government election to a national election that they haven't been able to handle effectively yes it is far more better than the uh, local government election or, or organized by many uh, local government uh siec you know uh siec uh but however right now um INEC is saddled with a lot of responsibility that overwhelms them and therefore uh, adding adding the issue of local government election to them um becomes a problem secondly for you to be able to do that you need to change a lot of laws and changing those laws can take year, years uh, before it becomes a reality. All so right. it's, it's something that can be supported, but we need to observe and ensure that we have the right framework to, to, to uh, All administer right. that. Okay, you know, it, not, time is never enough when having such conversations with you. Uh, we have to go uh, right now, hoping to touch base with you someday soon. To really deepen this, because we're just scratching this on the surface. There's a lot we still have to discuss uh, We got this at this time. Jacob Pele, uh, the founder of TAF Africa, we thank you indeed for your time and thoughts on his half today. Thank you, Shemu, and thanks to your chairman my good friend uh victor and the team uh you guys are david you guys are doing tremendous work uh god bless you and have a fruitful week